Hi everyone. So in this video, I will show you how to do the user management in SSMS. So sometimes we want to add new users to the database, modify the login credentials of existing users, or remove a user from the current list. So then these are the time when we need to know how to manage users in SQL Server. Okay, so currently I have logged into my own EC2 server, uh, as you can tell from this uh, floating bar here. Okay, so if I uh, connect to my local database here as system admin, so uh, I have one database already created from the previous video, uh, which is named as student. Okay. So this is called a local connection. Uh, I'm connecting to a local database server uh, inside my EC2 environment. Okay. So if we want to add a new user, someone who is not system admin, then we need to expand this security folder, expand the logins. Okay. So actually by expanding the logins folder, you will see all the current uh, authorized users who can access the database server uh, that I created. Uh, so for now, most of them are system users or service users. Uh, only SA is like an individual, uh, actual human being, uh, which is me, uh, where I use SA as login credential name and my own password to make the login happen. So uh, in order to add a new user, we need to right click on the logins folder, select new login. And there you, you can uh, come up with a login name you want to create for probably your colleague, your friend, or anyone you want to authorize access to. So here let's use Mike as an example user. So we want to give Mike a SQL Server authentication because it allows Mike to use a password to log into your database. Okay, so by default, as you can see from here, the enforce password policy, enforce password expiration, user must change password at next login. These three options have been pre-selected by default. Okay. So the enforce password policy means your password needs to be long enough. Uh, I remember it's like uh, more than 10 or 12 characters. And it has to have at least one uppercase, one lowercase, one number, and symbols. So the enforce password expiration means uh, the passwords will automatically expire after a certain while. And Mike the new user has to change the password after that interval. Uh, user must change password at next login means uh, the password you're creating for Mike here is a temporary password. Uh, because as a system admin, uh, you are creating some password that is supposed to be secret uh, to Mike, uh, or in other words, uh, Mike doesn't want his password to be known by anyone, including system and me, you. Okay. So this is only temporary password you're creating for Mike. So that is the meaning of the user must change password at next login. So after the first time Mike used your password to log into the database, the Mike has to change and come up with a new password for his own uh, usage. Okay. So for now, uh, let's create a temporary password for Mike. That is one, two, three, Q, W, E, uh, exclamation symbol, at symbol, pound sign, and uppercase Q, W, E. Okay. I'm going to repeat the same password here. Uh, let me retype it. Okay. So these are something uh, I want you to be aware of. And one more thing is uh, the default database is a master um, by default, 
but you may want to change it to some more meaningful password, uh, meaningful database that you want the new users to be. Uh, I mean, uh, other database that you want these new users to land on by default. So in this case, I will just set student as the default database for this new user. Uh, some other thing you want to modify is the user mapping, uh, which allows you to decide uh, which database and what membership the new user will take on that database. So for example, for the new user Mike, uh, I can select the student database and give this user the DB data writer privilege, for example. Okay. So although there are so many different membership roles, but there are three membership roles that uh, that is most commonly used, which are data reader, data writer, and DB owner. Okay. So the data writer, as the name suggests, uh, it allows Mike to only modify or say write data into the database. Uh, but this new user Mike cannot read the data out of the database. Okay. So in other words, the Mike will be able to insert data, update data, or delete data from the database you give Mike access to, but cannot select and see the content of the database. Okay. So this is useful when you want to set Mike or uh, design, design Mike as a, uh, for example, data input person. Okay. The data reader, on the other hand, only allows Mike to view the content of the database without modifying it. In other words, Mike will not be able to insert, update, or delete the data from the database. Okay, so this is good when you want to give someone uh, take a look, have someone take a look at your database content without the risk of your database tables and data being modified. Okay. The DB owner is a combination of the data writer or and the reader. Uh, Simply speaking, uh, it's technically it's not, but it's you can understand it as like a um, combination of data reader and a writer. So the any user set as DB owner will be able to both read and write into the database. Okay, so for this example, I will set Mike as the DB owner for the student database. Okay, so after uh, creating a new user credential like this, now we'll be able we'll, we will be able to uh, connect to the database using the new credential Mike. Okay, so here uh, server name I using dot meaning I'm still making a local connection to my EC2 database, and this time I'm using Mike as the login, and the password is the new user password I just created, which is 123QWE, exclamation, at pound, uppercase QWE, hit connect. So as you can see, uh, this new user Mike has to change the password immediately. Uh, he or she is using this temporary password to make a connection. So let me quickly set a new password for the mic. Okay. So this new password is unseen by the system admin or say database admin. So it will be safe for Mike to change this to new password that only he knows. Okay, so as you can see, Mike, so I'm, uh, I'm now logged into the database as Mike and I'm able to see the DB of the student table and its content. I'm also able to modify the content of this database table, uh, such as uh, updating the GPA value to 3.8. See, so Mike will be able to read the database and also write into the database. Uh, but when Mike tries to expand the system database, model, 
the mic will not be able to expand it or see the content or modify the content of the database uh, where the system didn't grant access to. Okay. So this is how, uh, as, a, uh, as a database admin administrator, you control the users who can do what, who can read data, who can insert data, and especially who you don't want them to have the privileges to change the content of your database. Okay, so next I will show you how to modify the existing user's credential, such as changing their passwords and changing their membership roles and so on. Right, so before we can change such uh, user credentials, uh, we need to log into the database as a system admin first. Okay, so let me reconnect to the database using CSA account. Okay, so after you have logged in as an S system admin, you can expand security, then expand the logins, and select the user uh, to whom you want to make some changes. So for example, if I want to make some changes to Mike, we can right click on Mike, then set properties. Okay, which will open, pops up the same window that we have seen before. So here we can change the Mike's password, even if this user has uh, set a new password for himself or herself. Uh, we can also remap these users to uh, other databases or change these users' database membership roles with other roles, such as data reader, data writer. Okay. So that's how uh, we can make any changes to user mic. So for example, uh, if I, in, uh, instead of the DB owner, if I give Mike the data reader only, okay, no data writer, okay, then if I log in as Mike this time using his own password, Okay, so this time, because Mike's membership role has been changed to data reader, that means Mike can still see the content of the student database table, but if Mike tries to edit this table, such as changing back the GPA of Michael Green to 3.7, it doesn't allow it. Okay, the data is not committed. The data in row one was not committed. Uh, the reason was the permission was denied on the object student. Okay, so this basically means Mike doesn't have privilege to update the content of the student database. Okay, so being able to modify the existing user's credential is quite useful sometimes. So one example I want to show you is sometimes we just really forgot the password for the system admin. Okay, the one we set during the installation process you know, uh, uh, mistakes happen. So this is one of the very common mistakes we make. So uh, if we forgot the system admin password, there's one workaround for this. So this is switching back the authentication mode to Windows authentication to log into your database as a system admin. Windows users is also a system admin. So there, expand the security, then expand the logins, Okay, so as a system admin, you can also modify the user who is SA. Right click, properties on SA, then come up with a new password for system admin user. Okay, so that's how uh, we can uh, retrieve or say uh, reset the password for system admin in case we forget it. Okay, so lastly, uh, if you want to delete an existing user, uh, all you need to do is to right click on the user and select delete and hit okay. So that's all you need. Uh, by the way, uh, you need to make sure the user you want to delete does not have existing connection to your database. Uh, otherwise, it will block you from deleting just like this. 
okay so you have to drop the connection first okay so this concludes this video and thanks for watching